In this video, we are going to take a look at tree diagrams and how to compute probabilities of compound events. Tree diagrams are useful to find all the possible outcomes of a compound event, or in other words, a sequence of actions. In this example here, I'm taking a test with two questions on it. The first question is a true-false question, and the second question is a multiple-choice question with five possible answers. What my diagram shows me is all the possible outcomes of my selection on these two questions. There's a sequence of actions, first answering the first true and false question, followed by the multiple choice question. What I've done here is created a diagram that shows branches off all the outcomes of each question. So in the first question in purple, my only choices are true or false. So I draw a branch for each of those selections. The second question is a multiple choice with five answers, A through E. On my diagram, I have drawn branches for those five choices, but I've drawn those branches off of all the possible choices for the previous question. What this does is it allows me to trace a path through this tree diagram down every possible branch to let me know what every possible outcome is. The first branch starting at the starting point would be true on the first question and then choice A. Another path would be true and then choice B. There are 10 different paths giving me 10 different outcomes for the selection of these two questions. Here we'll take a look at an example and draw a tree diagram, but we will also compute the probabilities of our outcomes. So our question here gives us a box with seven balls in it, and they're identical except for their color. There are four red balls and three green balls. What we're asked to find is all the possible outcomes of selecting two balls from the box, as well as the probability of each outcome. I'm going to start this question by drawing a tree diagram to find all the possible outcomes. Each level of my tree diagram has the outcomes of each action I'm about to perform. I start my diagram by showing the outcomes of the first action, which would be drawing the first ball out of the box. Those outcomes are red or green. My second action will be pulling the second ball from the box, which yields the same possible outcomes, red or green. But I've drawn those branches off of the red and green selections from the first pull. This diagram now gives me four paths, red, 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 green, green, red, and green, green, giving me these four possible outcomes here. I would like to find the probability of each one of these outcomes. One of the biggest mistakes in probability is to assume that every outcome is equally as likely to happen. There are only four outcomes, but it doesn't mean that the probability I draw two red balls is one out of four. This is because the likelihood I draw a red ball is greater than the likelihood I draw a green ball. So I have to account for those differences. What I'm actually going to do is use the multiplication rule to solve these probabilities. I'm going to do it for two different scenarios. The first scenario will be with replacement. What that means is that I will go under the assumption that after I pull the first ball out of the box, that I'm going to put it back before I pull the second ball out of the box. For my first computation, I want to compute the probability of drawing a red ball on the first pull and a red ball on the second pull. What I use is the multiplication rule. Since this is actually a compound event, where I have to pull a red on the first ball and pull a red on the second ball. I need to find each of those individual probabilities and multiply them together. To find the individual probabilities, I use a relative frequency. The probability I pull a red ball on my first pull would be 4 out of 7, because there are 4 red balls out of 7 total balls in the box. I multiply that by the probability I would pull a red ball on the second pull. That probability will be the same because I'm doing this experiment with replacement, so I put the first ball back, which means that there will be four red balls to choose from out of seven possibilities again. 
multiplying these together would give me a probability of 16 out of 49. In the second calculation, I'm computing the probability of getting a red ball and then a green ball. The probability I pull a red ball on the first pull is 4 out of 7 again. And the probability I pull a green ball on the second pull would be 3 out of 7 because there's 3 green balls out of 7 total balls. Again, I assume that I put the first red ball back before I made the second selection. The probability for this outcome is 12 out of 49. It's important to note that this probability refers to this specific sequence of events. Red on the first ball, green on the second ball. The third calculation computes a similar probability, but it's a different order of the sequence. It's the probability I get a green ball on the first pull and a red ball on the second pull. The calculations look the same with the outcome that's the same. But again, this outcome refers directly to this specific sequence. As a side note, if I was asked what's the probability I end up with a red ball or a green ball in either order, I would consider the probabilities that they could occur red first, green second, or green first, red second. And I would add up these two probabilities for a total of 24 out of 49. The last calculation is the probability of getting two green balls. Green on the first pull is 3 out of 7. And then if I put that ball back, it again would be 3 out of 7 on the second selection for a total of 9 out of 49. I can double check that I did all these calculations correctly because these four outcomes are the sample space of this experiment. Since these are the only four possible outcomes, the probabilities of each of them should all add up to 1. If I do that addition, I will see that I get 49 over 49, or 1. On the right side, I will do the same experiment, except I will do it without replacement. Meaning, once I pull the first ball out of the box, I will leave it out and then make my second selection. This will change the probabilities. Finding the probability of two red balls, my first selection would be the same. It would be four reds out of seven possibilities. But then I will assume that I left that ball out of the box. And so for my second selection, the probability of pulling a red would be three out of six. Again, I have to remember that anytime I compute the probability of one thing and another, when I find the probability of the second event, I always assume that the first did occur. So I only have to consider the situation that I did pull a red ball out on the first pull. Therefore, I'm sure that there are only three left out of the six total balls in the box. Computing the probability of red first, green second would give me again four out of seven on the first pull and three out of six on the second pull. This time the three out of six is because there are three green balls out of the six left. And again, I'm working under the assumption that the first ball I pulled is red. So I will definitely have three green balls left and there will only be six total balls left in the box. The third calculation is for the sequence green first, red second. A green ball on the first pull would be three out of seven. And then assuming I pulled a green and left it out of the box, there would still be four reds left out of six total balls for the second pull. The last calculation, two green balls, gives me a probability of three out of seven on the first pull. And then assuming that I did pull that green ball, there would only be two left out of six total balls for the second pull. I once again check all my calculations and see that the probabilities of all four of these outcomes all add up to one.